We will be happy to sit down and gently be quiet and we'll go through it very quickly. Remember, everything I'm doing now is pretty much the last time you're going to see it between now and June. So nice and quickly, and most of you got this anyway. In each case, what you want to see, you've you got to think in advance. And the fact that most of you know this means you probably realize this. You've got to think, what is common in this case and what is common in this case? Because what you're going to do is get an equation, and you're going to take what's common out on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So in series, what's going to be common everywhere? The <laughs> Same current going into one goes into the other or goes into I total. Right, so you're going to say, I want to re re represent Ohm's law in terms of making sure I've got I's. So I'm going to say I R total is equal to I R 1 plus I R 2. And in doing so, what am I implying that I'm saying that V total is equal to V1 plus V2. And from here to here would be V total. And this would be V1 from here to here. And this would be V2. Get rid of that. In other words, the work done in getting across R1 plus the work done getting across R2 is equal to the total work that's going to be done. So you sort of start off with that, and then you write that in terms of IR, IR, and IR. And here you say, well, actually, the I is going to be the same everywhere. So I R total is equal to I R1 plus I R2. And then you should say, in series, uh, current is the same. Is the same. You don't have to write it in, but it certainly makes a bit more sense, and certainly for an examiner, it gives them the impression that you know what you're doing as opposed to just learning it off. Will it make a difference to getting the marks? No. Will it make a difference later on when the examiner is trying to decide whether that 84 should be brought up to an 85? Yes, it will. It may. That's all you need to know. It may. So you just try and put in the little bits and pieces. <coughs> Not having to go with any one person in particular. So now you just learn off by heart this line. That's all you have to do. So you finish up with our total. <laughs> is equal to R1 plus R2. Straightforward, right? It's a derivation. Derivations are nasty, but if you can come up with any little trick to help you remember them, we should avail of it. In this case, what stays the same and what changes? <coughs> v is the same. V stays the same. V stays the same. And what can I say to begin with then? I can say the total current. I equals V over R. Or before I get there, I total is going to be what? I1 plus I2. I1 plus I2. And again, You've got all this written out, Jan, but you don't actually explain what I1 and I2 is. If I was marking this in a class exam, you would certainly lose marks. Because if you're just given those three lines, and you're not explaining what R1 or what I1 is or what V1 is, it suggests to me that you don't know. It's not clear what you're talking about. So you really do need to have a diagram to explain. This is I total going in, and it splits up into an I1 and an I2. And now you can say it makes sense. Now I know what I'm referring to. I total is equal to I1 plus I2. That which remains constant is going to be the voltage. So I rearrange this to give me V over R. V total over R total is equal to V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2. And I've got to say, well, what do I mean by V total? V total is going to be the voltage going from the first place to the second place. V1 is the voltage across where? The work done in getting across the first resistor. And we put an arrow there. They're not connections. You're just implying the work to go from there to there. And V2 is the work to go from there to there. So now you say the total current is equal to the current going through the first one plus the current going through the second one. And here we now say in parallel, what stays the same? The voltage. V is the same. And I want to say another little bit about that because you asked me a question about it the last time. V is the same, so therefore I can cancel the Vs. I've got 1 over R total. We've got 1 over R1. This 1 over R2. So at forward, you will remember that if it ever comes up again. And I will leave it at that, I think. Yeah, other, yeah, better leave it at that. Well, I'll, uh, okay, I'll try one more little bit. It'll take five minutes. You don't have to remember it, but it gets on to what we were talking about yesterday. Remember, five voltages in parallel were the same. 
So that's one resistor. And this is the other resistor. And out they come here. And if this is 10, R equals 10. And this is R equals 5. And up here I've got a voltage of 10 volts. And that's my symbol for voltage. And that's my 10 volts. Which one of these is going to require the greater work to bring a charge across? Mm -hmm. Bigger one. Right. It's, it's, it's taking me to okay. Lower resistance, so if I'm bringing one coulomb across this guy, it's going to take less work or more work than bringing one coulomb across this guy. The first one will be this. So if I'm bringing the same amount of charge across both, well then you wouldn't say that the work done is the same in both cases because there'll be less work done here than there is here. We need that on the door. Sorry, sorry. It's, it's that concept there. It's bringing charge from to another. Now what do we mean by charge? So first the coulomb. The coulomb. Because remember it's I that's flowing here. What's the relationship between current and Q equals V over Q. You've got to have an I, I in there I somewhere. I and quit. Q equals IT. So I equals Q divided by T. And it's this little bit here that we're going to try and make sense of up here. So the current is the charge divided by time. If I'm looking at my current up here, saying the current here, I1, and my current here, I2, if, if this turns out to be, and we could work this out, if this turned out to be 2 amps, and that's in the brackets to see because I haven't worked it out, what will the current up here? We'll let everybody else take a look at that. If the current down here is 2 amps, and I should have worked this out mathematically because I'm only guessing this, if that turned out to be 2 amps, what will my current up here be? Uh, it's what? What is it? Less resistance, therefore, it's, it's going to be 4 amps. If it was 2 amps here, it would be 4 amps up here. Right? So whatever, the current there is going to be twice the current here. What do we mean by current? I mean the charge per unit time. So basically, there's going to be, in this case, twice as much charge per unit time past this resistor than there is past this resistor. So, and that's why the resistance is lower. You with me here? The resistance is lower, the current is doubled, and that means in per second, I'm going to be bringing twice as much charge. And that's what it means when I say by I. I is the charge. It's not the charge I'm bringing. It's the charge per unit time. And it's that little second there that makes a difference. That's right to explain it. So it's not that I'm bringing the same amount of charge to both resistors. It's that in one second, I'm bringing twice as much charge, twice as many coulombs per second here as I am here. And that's why the two effects are cancelling each other out. That's why when you've got V equals IR, it's easy to say the current is twice it is down here, but what does it mean by current? It means the charge per unit time. And that's why we say the potential across there, the work done in bringing charge per unit time there, is the same as the work done in bringing charge per unit time down here. Okay? Because there's less charge per unit time here, but there's more work done in bringing it across. There's more charge per unit time here, but there's less work done in bringing each Coulomb. There's less work than bringing each coulomb, which are bringing twice as many coulombs per second up there as you are there. So it's not a definitive answer, but it just gives you another little extra bit to what's going on. Okay? And make that a bit, I just better reiterate again, the two amps I just made up, which would make this four amps, but to work this out, you do it fairly quickly. How would I work out what my current would be here? How would I work out what my total current is? Oh, You'd have to start off with the resistance is 1 over our total is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Then you'd use V like to get the total current. And then you break it up into this one, this one. Okay? That'll do for now.